Oh my gosh, we're live. Uh, hello, uh, uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, there's been a there's been a last minute change. We just decided in the back room that this is no longer the pitching you panel. It's the good hair panel. So if you come for pitching you, please leave. This is about how great our hair is. Um, no, uh, that's actually not uh, what this panel is. Uh, this is uh, pitching you uh, a panel with a title uh, a little more mediocre than hopefully the valuable information that you're gonna be receiving from myself and these fine folks. Um, and before we get to introductions uh, of everyone here, I just wanna give you a little context. Um, I was a scholar at, uh, a POC scholar at Big Bad Con uh, in 2022. And, uh, you know, going through the whole process and the, the interviews, like one thing I noticed is uh, a lot of us didn't really understand how to sort of present ourselves in that that sort of context. And that is something that, coming from my background, uh, I actually have a lot of experience with. So it was something that I talked with Sean about kind of giving back uh, and, and hopefully imparting some of that knowledge to everybody, but also drawing in people from other disciplines that might have some other perspectives on that. So uh, without further ado, I would just like to have everybody kind of go through their little intros and then I'll end with me and uh, We'll go from there. Um, but Omar, do you want to just tell everybody who you are, what you're doing, what you want to be doing, all that, all the good, good, good stuff, and then we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I'll keep it simple. Uh, I'll start. I'll, I'll keep it with trite, and then we can go around and talk about, I guess, like stuff we've done recently mm -hmm. uh, and what we want to do. Um, but my name is Omar Najam. I am a writer, director, and little TTRPG guy. Uh, so I'll kick it off with that and pass the baton. Cool. Uh, Markia? Hey, I'm Markia McCarty. I am a voiceover actor, host, uh, producer, and community director for um, Hunters Entertainment, which is a gaming company that brought you Alice is Missing. And I will pass the baton up to Elise. Hi, I'm Elise Resendez. I am a maker and creator in the TTRPG space, and I am half of Mythic Grove. Awesome. Uh, and I am the uh, host of your panel going last for whatever reason, because I don't host panels. Um, my name is Carlos Cisco. I'm a TV writer and a tabletop uh, RPG writer and designer. Um, but to sort of um, really kind of like hone down on what the focus of this panel is, um, I, had, I had asked everybody, including myself, to uh, really adhere to three questions because, um, you know, again, in talking with people, in, in talking with people before and after the interviews and seeing how people sort of responded, how, you know, what, what, uh, what people um, really succeeded at, what people kind of uh, fell short on, uh, it really kind of came down to three questions for me. And uh, that's, who are you? What are you doing? And what do you want to do? And it's, you know, a little, a little more, uh, I guess, like in depth than just like sort of like the surface level, the, the, who are you, you know, when I, when I think of that, it's to sort of keep it away from anything professional. Nobody wants to hear you list off your resume right off the bat. They want to connect with you more than anything, because like the truth of it is, if you're going to be working with someone for, you know, in my case, uh, 10, eight to 10 hours a day in a room, five days a week with someone you want to know that you can occupy space with that human and, and not want to kill them. But, you know, it doesn't matter what, what you're doing. You know, people want to know, oh, is this person chill? Uh, mostly. Uh, am I going to be able to hang out with them? Am I going to be able to, you know, uh, work, uh, work well with them? And so I think in that, uh, it's sort of on you to, um, kind of create something personal about yourself. You don't have to necessarily be vulnerable. Don't necessarily be self-deprecating. I actually don't think that helps you. Um, but maybe like a very short story or formative event that really speaks to the essence of you, uh, in my case. Um, and this is something that sort of I, I, uh, I honed over the course of 10 years out, out here in the, the film industry, but I was born in Hawaii to parents who loved me very much, but not so much each other. So they divorced when I was five thus beginning a biannual sojourn that would haunt me until high school where I would spend summers and Christmases with one parent and the school year with the other. Then every two years they'd swap. So role-playing games, sci-fi fantasy, TV, uh, TV and books, you know, nerd shit. It was always there as a constant when everything else in my life was chaos. And so that is sort of my, you know, bullet point, uh, you know, three, three to four sentence uh, essence of me that I feel like gives people a couple things to grasp onto, but but at least you have a sort of a more in-depth intro that, that kind of describes who you are. 
Yeah. Um, I was the middle of a lot of kids. I have one of every kind of brother you can, uh, full-blooded a half and adopted in a step. Uh, and as such, there were a lot of things that a lot of us were doing growing up. And I went into my imagination to have the kind of adventures that I wanted to have while divorced parents were scattered across the all cardinal directions, bringing a ton of kids to a bunch of different activities that they all wanted to be a part of. And, uh, and as such, I became a maker of things because I wanted to make them. Uh, and that's sort of been the formative start of my journey as a, uh, as a jack of all trades, a master of none, which I do think is far better than only being a master of one. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, Omar, what you got for us? Uh, first and foremost, I am a huge nerd. Uh, growing up in the Bay Area, I used to go to dirt conventions. I'm not talking about WonderCon. I'm talking about <laughs> a dilapidated building that was condemned uh, where they had a bunch of fold-up tables. And you would go and you would buy laser discs of, uh, of old Godzilla movies and Dragonheart. Uh, we didn't have a player, just wanted to have them. And it was the kind of thing where uh, it was a bunch of strangers connecting. And I think that was the mm -hmm. first instance sort of outside of like school and everything where I, I felt that and I, and I watched that happen and it's something that I became really fascinated with and I wanted to dedicate my entire life to it. And so mm -hmm. when my parents gave me a beat up Canon ZR90 uh, back in the day that could hold about 20 minutes of tape, we would go in the backyard and use cardboard to make little sets and stuff and to put on movies, not to show off. Uh, we rarely watched them back. It was so that we could just make them and get all the kids in the neighborhood together and just, and it's not playing pretend pretend it's it's making something real for an afternoon mm. and that would be in the can and then i would go arduously uh edit it because i like you know the mechanics of that but it's the gathering of people together uh to do something that i am so attracted to and has led me to here so that's my little pitch amazing mark here yeah. Uh, well, I come from a mostly military family. Half of them are Southern. Mm. The other half are computer science majors. Uh, I was a military brat. So I lived in seven countries before I was 12. So for me, the reason why I'm such a giant nerd now is because when you move from base to base, you it's it's literally like these capsules of america mm. <laughs> within uh different countries and different cultures so when you're interacting with the other kids there you literally have whatever you came in with and mm. you have whatever's at the exchange or at the commissary and then that's that's it because otherwise when you leave the base it's a different country don't expect for american culture to be there so because of that, all of us nerds just kind of gravitated towards each other and taught each other our ways because uh, in that way, it's like, oh, you're not into wrestling? Let me tell you how wrestling is like stunt cosplay. And then... <gasps> And then you reel that off and you get you get like a uh, new nerds involved. So that's literally the building blocks of my nerd life. Mm. And I just kind of get paid professionally to do that now for different groups of people. So well, nice. And and you know what I like about all of all of the stories that we sort of um, you know presented here is that naturally, and I mean I know that we sort of cheated because we know the questions in advance, but like <laughs> You know, the, the the idea here is that these these three questions can be sort of um, modularly memorized so mm -hmm. that as you're meeting with people, you know, if someone says, hey, what are you doing? You could launch right into the second question, which we're going to get into. And then, like, I mean, this happened in my last meeting. It was a good, like, 20 minutes into it before it's like, okay, you tell me your story. I didn't, we haven't talked about you at all. And then you have to sort of be like, oh, right, I have to pivot back to question one. And mm -hmm. so really knowing those questions, like the answers to these questions in your core and being able to sort of flip them around or, you know, rejigger them or reorder them, knowing the laugh lines and stuff like that is really going to help you when you do this. And literally practicing it in front of a mirror is also going to help. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but in terms of um, what we're doing, you know, we, we all gave a, a, a one sentence thing about um, what we're doing, but why don't we why don't we kind of go through the the list again? Let's let's start with you, Elise. What uh, give me your give me your uh, pitch on what you're doing for question two? Uh, I am post pandemic building a space with my business partner Gabe Hicks, where we are trying to cultivate fertile soil for people in the TTRPG industry to come to Mythic Grove 
put down some roots, build a community and a company that can help foster small indie uh, games to be made, uh, circle back around when they go out of orbit and do their own thing. There's always a home to come back to. Uh, and we are in the middle of finishing the Session Zero system, which was a game that we kickstarted uh, last year that we are in the middle of getting InDesign files to our manufacturing company for. And on the backs of that, I'm realizing how much information I have about production pipeline and manufacturing information. And so I'm also trying very hard to get that information out into the community because it is such a valuable resource. So I'm trying to cultivate more fertile soil in other people's communities and spaces of their own. Awesome. Uh, well, Marquia, what, uh, what, are, what are you doing these days? Not much, right? <laughs> you know what? How I'm dare not, you? Not anything. I, it's like chill. My days are like so chill. I like lay in a hammock and sip tea. It's listen. We ran into each other at Geeky Teas last night. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> jealous. I'm so jealous. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Um, as the new community director for uh, Hunters Entertainment, I have a number of initiatives that I'm uh, enacting this year, including my actual play initiative, a uh, diversity initiative, and then of course. Along with that, uh, we are expanding our streaming, our YouTube channel, uh, and also our social media campaigns. So we're reincorporating TikTok. I've been learning TikTok, y'all. I think I, I think I just about have it, which is amazing. So with all of that, it's going to be around product releases, but more importantly, it's going to be around. Uh, we're becoming a, a quarterly Kickstarter company. So we will be having four Kickstarters a year. We have already had a very successful one, uh, the Alice is Missing Silent Falls expansion that wrapped, I think, I don't know a time anymore, two weeks ago, who knows, uh, somewhere around there. So we will be having our spring Kickstarter coming up soon, and we will be announcing that. On a more personal note, uh, I have leaned back into voice over acting and I'm um, acting in general. I'm on avail for a number of projects, which I can't discuss right now, but um, those are gonna be very awesome <laughs> uh, uh, if that pans out. I'm very, very pleased about that. And along with that, with uh, the spare time that I have, I've... Uh... <laughs> 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 I, I've started um, writing uh, nerd articles for some of my favorite publications, and I will let anyone know um, when those come out, uh, both TTRPG and nerd-centric community things. Nice. Omar. Uh, what have I been up to recently? Uh, I've kind of just been feeling myself, I guess, is the <laughs> the short answer of it all. Yeah, listen up. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's it's been a wild ride re-emerging to the world and uh the way i've kind of been processing everything and been trying to make sense of it has been through uh games honestly games and stories and uh you know in uh, the boris saga bane's break over at pixel circus uh i've really been trying to figure out how to make sense of the devastation around you how to stay optimistic and also mm -hmm. possibly find friendship and love uh, over on Power Play, I played a little Ghost Rider, uh, and that was all about connections and how do you deal with loneliness and what does that mean? And uh, knowing that we only have so much time on this earth, what do you do with that? Mm. And uh, then over on A Court of Fame Flowers, I got to deal with um, conflict uh, and exploring ace identity, um, which has been an absolute blast. And so it's really just been using these games and stories to kind of dig a little bit deeper. Uh, and I was recently diagnosed with autism and I've been doing a project where I'm designing a one pager uh, every month. And for January, that one was a little cozy cafe one. And I got to deal with like uh, sensitivity in terms of how much you're sharing with people, uh, masking, and just a real easy game of just you build a little cafe and then you just meet people uh, where they are on that day. And if you don't, uh, they will pull back a little bit. And if you do, then you unlock new magic drinks. Um, and so it's just been kind of a great time of uh, creativity and meditation, I guess. Nice. Well, um, that's that's awesome. Um, so for my part, um, I, uh, I recently ended uh, my run on Star Trek Discovery Season 5 as a story editor, and that's like a level two TV writer for normies out there. You don't have to really memorize what that means. Um, uh, we, we were recently just canceled, so that was, uh, that was very sad, but you know, so it goes in this industry out here. But in addition to that, um, I, uh, I recently had an article published in MCDM's Arcadia, and I have a bunch of monsters coming out in Flea Mortals. 
Um, look for the yum grub. It's disgusting and delicious. <sighs> um, but uh, I also wrote uh, for Star Trek Adventures Discovery module, and um, I have a, a, a giant shark movie coming out later this month called The Black Demon that's based on a story I pitched and wrote about a Mexican cryptid by the same name. So um, that's uh, that's pretty pretty fun. Um, stars Josh Josh Lucas, and uh, and then I recently co-adapted um, a game called Forgery uh, into a horror feature with uh, the writer Banana Chan, and we're uh, we're currently looking for buyers for that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm playing a lot of Destiny 2 Lightfall. If anybody else, want to... <laughs> <laughs> I got time. It's no longer hiatus. It's unemployment, right? Um, but yeah, so I guess like the the sort of uh, the takeaway from those those four is you can see that while technically we're all just kind of listing off our resumes there, it shouldn't feel like it. Mm. You know, if like what I really like, like in particular, Omar, um, when you are talking about each of those um, actual plays that you did, you were like, this is what I was trying to explore with it. This is what mm. I got out of it. And I think that that's a really good uh, object lesson in this is like, what was the, you know, in, in terms of like, when you're listing off what you did, like, what was the thing that you were super proud of about it? Like, what was the thing that challenged you, like pushed you as an artist or a performer or a writer? Um, and so I think that all of those things like really help uh, bolster that, but it is like, that is kind of the, the you know, uh, uh, nuts and bolts of just, you got to communicate your resume clearly, first of all, um, without it feeling like, you're just listing off a, a line of credits that someone could easily just go and look up. Yeah. Um, and and please, you three, jump in anytime. I don't want to just <laughs> running out of water. Oh, you're doing such a good job. <laughs> um, yeah. So well, that actually brings. Uh, so now that we got through all those, the the I think the most important question, and it seems sort of easy because I think like a lot of us, while we're in these spaces, we kind of know what we want. But I think uh, the, the problem is a lot of us don't know how to ask for what we want or, mm. or ask the people who can give us what we want in the way that, you know, we'll get them to give it to us. Um, and I think it's, you know, you really need two parts to this. Um, first, you really need to be able to concisely uh, describe and like with, with a focus what you want. And mm. th if, if you are a person who is multidisciplinary, like many of us are, really play to your audience. If you are, you know, if you're meeting with someone who is going to be hiring for actual plays, that's all you want to do. <laughs> if you are, if you are meeting with someone who wants to hire you to be a writer, that's all you want to do. Mm -hmm. And and that's, you know, it's not to pigeonhole yourself. It's that, it, you know, and it's something I learned in, in the, uh, the television industry. And Omar, I, I'm sure you've heard this as well, is like, once you break in, it's a lot easier to do all the other things that you want to do. But if you can just break in, you know, break through the door, get, you know, get your foot in, get, make some contacts with something that is a really good example of one thing, it's going to make diversifying that much easier. And so really play to, you know, your audience in that, in that sense of like who you're meeting with and what, what can they help you with? Um, and so this is, I think the section that is the most kind of nebulous and, uh, immutable per se. Um, yeah. So, um, Marquia, why don't we start with you? What, uh, what do you, what do you want to be doing out here? I mean, even though you're doing so much cool stuff, <laughs> everything. What, what's the next level for you? Oh, uh, well, I, as much as I love and enjoy our, our industry, I want to do things on a bigger scale, on a global scale. Mm -hmm. And I would love to do a talk show. Uh, type of mm. a, a thing with that. Um, I would be an executive producer on it and also um, hosting it, have a have a wonderful team around me where we do an intersectionality of bringing all the nerd stuff mm. that I've grown up with and that I already know how to bring into mainstream things. I want to be able to do that uh, basically on a scale where my, my parents will see it. <laughs> I guess it would be a... Oh, I wouldn't say it. So... You know, I, I know I've made it when my when my parents can turn something on <laughs> and see what I do. <laughs> so that and then in my spare time, I want to do voiceover stuff for um, mm -hmm. projects that I'm producing for my friends. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Elise? I would love to get to the point. I think 
I want to interact with the community in a way that's really personal. And so if at some point I could open up a space on the East Coast that had two top, four top, and a big 10 top of podcast or um, recording studio space that also in front had a cafe and or community space, uh, you could come in and rent tables, play tables, record tables, plug in your laptop, take everything with you afterwards, but then have a community centered space up front that was more public facing and, and more, um, in, you know, in general walk-ins welcome. Uh, I think it would, I think it would be incredible to have the kind of space that I had on smaller scales growing up that really made a really big impression on me. Um, to give back to me that's not there yet and and sort of fulfill that cycle again of bringing people into the space, uh, introducing people into the world that made me who I am today in such a big way. And as much as I would hate to go back into service in some kind of way, I'd I'd make I'd make coffee for nerds if I could in a in a community <laughs> space. I'd do that. That I I I would love to do that. Or you'd hire someone to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but not not in the first two years, Carlos. That's, that's true. <laughs> we know how this goes. That's true. With yeah. the state of the industry, Carlos and I uh, will 100 percent be available uh, if you yeah, <laughs> are interested. Yeah, it's a good uh, couple months here now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as a as a former tailor in the East Coast uh, film and television scene, we all know that the industry is wild, and we're building castles on top of quicksand. So. <laughs> Well, I'll go back to making coffee at some point. So it keeps it interesting. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of coffee you'd like to make, Omar, what do you want to make? Ah, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, a delicious cortado, I suppose, uh, <sighs> if I were to have to choose. Um, but uh, <laughs> more pertinently to this conversation, um, I'm having such a good time getting really weird and creative uh, with designing games, uh, with designing uh, you know, little sheets of paper that you're going to put at a table in front of folks or online and everyone can read and you all collectively contribute to an experience and an emotion and you explore that and you leave that game feeling different. And I'm having such a good time with the design that I think the next thing I want to do is to be able to publish that, to get that mm. out in there into the world, uh, which would be like step two uh, to work with publishers to figure out how to get that writing honed and out there um and then step three is there's been a lot of talk about this being an industry and not necessarily like a community um and for a lot of practices uh i agree wholeheartedly with that i would like to focus back on the community though and stay local and i would love to once games are out there take it to youth centers in los angeles uh or set up events that are completely free completely open safe spaces where people can play games get to know each other uh meet folks under that nerdy wonderful pretext that i feel like i formed so many great relationships through nice um and so well for my part um as far as what i'd like to be doing i would love to keep finding like interesting games and ips to adapt for television and film because like for me, when I look at a game, I see something that has sort of infinite potential, but it also has guardrails on it in a way mm -hmm. that like satisfies some of that need that uh, studios and, and producers need for IP, but also gives me kind of a full range of creativity when it comes to character and story, because most TTRPGs don't really have one to begin with, and that's kind of the point. Um, and so that's what I really love about finding these like little gems like forgery and, and wretched and alone um, to, uh, uh, you know, adapt and turn into something different. But, you know, I also want to, you know, keep making connections and inroads uh, in the game industry, because like for me as a writer, you know, this is uh, it, it, anybody following this industry this year, this past year will know that it's um, it is it's it's not any industry with any sort of um, uh, uh safety or security and so not that games do either but for me as a writer kind of the key to survival is diversification so mm -hmm. i see games as one of those paths it's something i'm passionate about it's something i love it's something i think i'm pretty good at and so 
you know, it's something I would like to keep doing as um, not necessarily a side hustle. It's just another hustle as, you know, a part of it as a creative hustle as a writer and, you know, a fellow creator in this space. So that's, uh, yeah, I think that um, that wraps it up. Let's all go. Uh, no. uh, so, you know, what I think what's cool about all of the the sort of the, the last part is it, it shows people, um, you know, something aspirational about you, whether you're talking something like really big, like what Marquia was talking about with the, you know, or, or really, uh, at least with this cafe of, of, you know, this, this global talk show or the, this, this large cafe, like those are sort of like big, you know, very big, uh, but attainable, you know, uh, dreams within this space. And I think it's important to show people that when you're meeting with them, that you have goals beyond, yeah, I just want to write that module for you. Like the, the writing that wizards module is the end all be all of my career. No, you know, like you have all of these things are stepping stones. And I don't know, people who don't really like acknowledge that like all sort of, especially freelance jobs are that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of like all part of just building something, you know, bigger for yourself. Um, I guess we could go to questions from the audience. I have a, a couple other questions I could just throw out uh, to uh, the panelists um, that I'm interested in knowing about them that I don't know. But if there are other mm. other questions that people have from the audience, I think we can pr probably start taking those. But um, uh, I, you know, okay, let's let's uh, let's go with this for for the three of you. When you go into like a meeting, and I think this applies more for like our age of Zoom, um, where mm. you know we can kind of control our space before we go into it. Do you guys have like a specific? pump up song or dance or what have you, preferably if it's super cringy, uh, that you listen to or do before uh, you, your your pitches? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. I'll go with mine. Mine is is Dare by Stan Bush from the Transformers 1986 mm. soundtrack. Yes. Uh, really gets me going. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, m mine is mine is a little more athletic than I think I that sh it shouldn't reflect my personality that I do this. Uh, uh -huh. If I do need to, I actually will go into a forearm trap plank on the ground and just like listen to whatever is on the shuffle on on Spotify and just hold that for a minute and a half and really center myself in my body because my body will forever be louder than my mind if I listen to it. And mm -hmm. it's a really great way of bringing me back to sort of my my four walls if I'm especially if I'm a little nervous about what's going on. And it is just very nice to sort of quiet and center. But I'm not actually a jock. <laughs> Omar, you go next. Mine's, em <laughs> Mine's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go, but uh, it is no way it's more embarrassing than this. Mine is the Tron Legacy soundtrack. <gasps> yes! There's nothing embarrassing about that soundtrack. No. <laughs> really, the, but Omar, I, I just tweeted about this the other day. I listened to that soundtrack for 12 hours of writing because yes. it is one of Good. the best soundtracks to mm -hmm. do it's anything incredible. to. It's incredible. It also saved my life one time, uh, but we can save that for later. But <laughs> Drez is the is the most insane thing to write anything to. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. So first off, I um, I thank myself uh, for doing whatever it is that I did. I, I thank myself in the sense that it's already happened. So it's mm -hmm. like, we're like, Hey, I'm so glad that you did that. I'm very grateful that you, you showed up and you did like your best with that. You, you brought the best you version that you have to give right now to that. And I'm so proud of you. Like I'll, I'll do these positive affirmations for myself, um, before it. And then after I finished doing that, I, uh, I put on Mortal Kombat and dance. That's Hell it. Yeah. That's it. That's the right Hell answer. Yeah. That's the right answer. Hey. Okay. Hey, can I can I show my my happy dance that I do if I'm really it's this. Nice. That's I love this happy dance. We all get bad and we all get stupid <laughs> and it's all fine because it helps us. Yeah. Okay. Do you That's do you remember good. the things from dance class that you would do where you're like going like this? It's that. We're Mortal Kombat. <laughs> 
So, Carlos, uh, yeah. prostrate yourself before the people online. Tell us your secrets. I did. I said it was dare. More, better. <laughs> yeah, we need one more. The touch? The touch? <laughs> by, by Sam Bush? The sound it also makes me feel good. It makes me feel powerful, I guess. Um, no. Uh, so, you know, sometimes, like, when we're in a meeting, you know, and, and like I was talking about earlier, things kind of get out of order. Um, mm. You know, like, sometimes you're asked to sort of pitch an idea before you've even, like, talked about yourself. Is there anything, like... Do you have a trick to sort of recenter yourselves if anything has kind of gone? So, so I don't want to say south because I don't feel like our meetings are kind of going south in that way. But like, I don't know. Do you have something like if you feel like you're pitching something to someone, a way to kind of get back on track? Um, anything? Mm. If not, we can just move on to another question because I don't <laughs> have an answer either. I I mean, in the spirit of this panel, uh, uh, my think go to is if anything gets off, oh. I always ask a question uh, to them. And yeah. get that alignment. Uh, and so if it is like we're just stuck in the mud, someone seemed distracted. I feel like it's like an old like industry thing that mm -hmm. they used to do, like they used to talk about in the 80s. But like you just ask them a question of just like if you're in an office or something like that or you're on Zoom and you look and you're just like, oh, the, you know, you see like uh, the Brooklyn Bridge in the back. Like, are you from New York? Um, and I have like a, I always wanted to be the the host of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me when I was growing up. Um, so I feel like I learned a lot of like regional things. So for me, that's a go to is anytime I see something of someone like they've got like, I don't know, a Seattle Seahawks thing. I'm just like, oh, my God. What's your favorite coffee place? Before we go on, I just got to know it's off the top of my head. You you clearly love Seattle. What's that? I have a that's that's funny because that's sort of like the the sort of uh, other question I had is like you know what bulletproof questions do you do you have to sort of like get the <laughs> conversation back on track but like one of mine that I've tended to ask in meetings lately is when I start to detect like a, a lull like or the conversation starting to end but I'm like no 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 we have twenty more minutes left in this forty minute general <laughs> uh, is like asking someone what their white whale is like what's that Ooh, one project no that they like oh, really want to sink their teeth into because like once they can start talking about that you can just lean in and be like oh I would love to do you know this and this and this you know because if it's if it's something you want to work on then it's it's much easier for you to have a sort of meeting of the minds when they're already jazzed about a project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um um, oh, I tend to okay. have the I tend to have the reverse of that where mm -hmm. I and this is something that's just happened all my life where it's I'll I'll go into like a meeting or, or something like that and people start telling me about their lives you know or they'll start telling me about something that has nothing to do with my time for in that room mm -hmm. and then you know you're you're standing there and you're and listening and taking in because we're all human and human experience and everything like that um but also i only get 15 minutes and <laughs> you know and they're and then they're starting to go into things and and so what i'll do if anybody else finds themselves in uh this kind of uh situation where you have a time limit but you know uh what i do is i'll i'll be like oh okay you know that is that sounds like an incredible coffee shop. I'm going to have to go there the next time I'm in Chelsea and New York. But you know, that does remind me this pitch that I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. literally yeah. a character in it that also is nuts about coffee. And <laughs> yeah. Get the hand back on the wheel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We are here for a reason, people. Stop talking about the <laughs> be like, After my time is up, me and you can go in the hallway and talk about whatever you want. This is, this is Marquia <laughs> going, on the clock. Yeah, this is Marquia going, reclaiming my time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, no, there's actually um, a couple of questions from uh, the audience, and I think one of them is, is particularly pertinent to, I don't want to besmirch game designers in particular, but I find that a lot of us are particularly awkward sometimes, myself included. So what tips do we have for approaching or asking uh, indus uh, for industry meetings when we deal with social anxiety? For me, and this is not everyone's flavor, because uh -huh. I, I think this is very, I think this is very specific. Uh, so there are going to be things that work and things that don't. I always name it. Uh, if I can call it out and I can say, you know, for, so for me, one of the things that I struggled with growing up, I both have uh, spoken and 
uh, reading dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Um, I read at a lower level throughout school for a very, very long time, an embarrassingly long time as a, as a bit of a, a, a book of file these days, it's embarrassing how low level I was reading at a very young age. And so oftentimes if I'm speaking, I will wix my merds. And my favorite thing is to do that. I switch the first letters of two words back to back, especially if they're M's or W's or something like that. Uh, and so I will actually just say like, Hey, you know, I'm really excited to meet you. This is, this is so exciting for me. I'm sorry if I stumble over my words, I'm dyslexic or my favorite way of saying it is listexic, especially if I'm describing the thing that is, and I just name it. Cause then it's not, then it's a known quantity and we can laugh about it. And then I can try again. And it gives me permission to take up that space, to be where I am, to be who I am, and to have it be okay. Uh, and I think we all have things like that. If you're comfortable naming them, that's a really great way of sort of breaking the ice, especially if it's in your intro, because then it's not like a bomb that you have to diffuse if it goes off. You're like, nope, there's a landmine. We're just going to avoid that and move over it. Great. I mean, for me, it was always like getting over sort of the anxiousness of these like, you know, general meetings and pitches was just memorizing that self-pitch mm. because if I knew that thing like to like the rote degree it sort of didn't matter um like it was yeah. it was very easy for me to just like I could dip in and break out whenever I needed to and so like if I needed to you know if I was nervous I could use that as a crutch uh I could mm. like lean into the thing that I was very comfortable talking about or know really well and know how to branch off of so that's kind of uh That'd be mine is just really know your story back and forth. Hmm. For, uh, go ahead, Markia. Yeah. Uh, for something that helps with me is, uh, well, I'll, I'll do a, a touchstone thing where I'll remember that everybody in the room is a human, just like me. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and a, a thing that really helps me with that is, you know, when I walk in the room, you know, look around the room, look at what people are wearing. Is someone like maybe they're slouched down or, or, or something like that? For for instance, just like looking around this panel, I feel like I could walk into the room if I was interviewing uh, with Elise, Carlos and Omar could walk in and be like, oh, well, I see everybody got either the yellow or green memo today. <laughs> It's just the lighting. So everybody got a good <laughs> hair memo. <laughs> yeah. So it's like something like that where it's just like immediately like, oh yeah, we are wearing yellow or green. And it's like, oh, she means her hair. Oh, okay. And then there's like a little <laughs> chuckle, ice broken. Uh, and then That's you know, move on. Like uh one of one of my favorite um human touchstone moments that I did was when I was uh I was pitching for a, a very big streaming channel. Uh and uh it was like a whole Zoom thing. And the person came came up on screen and like behind them, they had uh, like all of these musical instruments. And this person had like lustrous, like lustrous hair. And I didn't even mean to, I was like, oh my God, look at you and look at that hair. And he, they just started laughing. And I was like, <laughs> I need your products. This is amazing. Uh, and, and then we got into the pitch, but it's like, just, just right there. It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, I'll throw this real quick out onto the table. Um, for my anxiety, it comes from uh, uh, me worrying about what people are thinking about me mm -hmm. and then realizing that I'm thinking about that. And then like, that's where the, that's the spiral I get caught in. Mm -hmm. um, so for me in meetings, it helps a lot to remember that it's actually not, it's not a date. Uh, mm. And that makes it so much easier because I get to focus on the thing, whether it's a story or just work, which is not me. That's a very separate thing than just me. Um, it's not an assessment of who I am. They're not going to have thoughts about who I am. And even if they do, and even if they're just like, this is a garbage human being, uh, we're talking about something else. And it's something that I clearly like and I'm passionate about. And it's something that they're probably very uh, interested in mm. and passionate about because they're an industry professional. And so mm. you already have that point of connection. It doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be your personality. You know, uh, I can talk to people who uh, seem nothing like me, but if we're both talking about, I don't know, the X-Men, we'll talk for five hours because we're talking about the X-Men. <laughs> so when you're talking about that separate thing and you're focusing on that, you yeah. know, that's where the conversation lives. Can I jump off that real quick, Carlos, as Absolutely. a thing that I think exactly what you want. the, the one, the one, the number one piece of advice that I would give to anybody, especially if they're nervous about being in the room and they're nervous about pitching themselves, please, 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 please have it be okay that you will not be everyone's flavor. 
Yes. You cannot yes. do everyone's flavor. Not everybody likes chocolate. Not everybody likes mint chocolate chip. Like it is okay that you are not it for that person that you're that you're pitching yourself to. And it doesn't mean anything about you. It is and, and the second that I the second that I sort of got that in my heart of hearts, because you can say that, but mm -hmm. if you can feel it and know that it is about them creating the team for them, depending on the yes. project. Uh, it's going to be what's right for them. And on the same card of that, the other side of that coin is if you show someone exactly who you are and you don't try to tweak yourself to be what they need, if you show what you have in its purest form, which is exactly what Carlos did by crafting those incredible questions for everybody uh, at the beginning of this, it will give you the best chance of being someone's flavor because they're looking for your flavor or it will let you avoid situations where you were something that somebody wanted and then you weren't that thing and now you have to do a project with them and it's just a landmine so be you and also have it be okay that you are not it for somebody else nice um so when when pitching yourself is there anything that we like to bring with us business cards portfolios etc uh personally no um i uh Outside of, I think, like a couple of, you know, kind of very specific sort of networking events, I've never brought a business card or anything. Mm -hmm. um, granted, when I went to Big Bad Con, I printed up business cards and they were used to great effect. Uh, so that's a little different. You know, when, when you are going to a situation where you're going to be pitching yourself and a lot of people are going to be pitching themselves to people or you're going to be meeting a ton of people. I think business cards are a really helpful thing um, to have just to hand out and, you know, collect. You can make a game out of it. Um, but um, I don't think like within the context of, you know, if you're already meeting with someone, exchanging the cards sort of feels like mm. that's already been done. You know, like if you're at this stage, that that first that first meeting has already happened, it feels like um of the like oh here's this card call me let's set up a meeting and then this is where you actually sit down with someone and, and talk about yourself but uh uh your mileage may vary does anybody else feel differently on that or i love business cards i'll be honest um i i used to not i used to not like i would get all my work from like word of mouth mm -hmm. like didn't even have a website for like the longest time, all this other stuff. But at conventions and everything like that, I enjoy taking people's business cards because um, I, at the end of the night or whatever, I'll write down in my notebook, be like, oh, this so-and-so, um, I'll be like, oh, they were interested in this. Um, uh, the way that I, I work like with my thing, be like, oh, they, they were wearing this or, oh, they had um, uh, brilliant pink hair, uh, you know, such and such. And then I'll, I'll, put that card in that page of the notebook. And then like the next page is the next day. Like that's, that's how I keep things. It's very analog. I know, but that's how I keep things separate in my head. So I can have more of a clean, clean slate slate for the next day. Mm. And later on a month afterwards, when we've, <laughs> when we've uh, decompressed from whatever the con schedule was, um, I can go back to those pages and be like, oh, okay, so March 30th. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Brilliant pink hair. Oh, they were, they were interested <laughs> in becoming a, you know, action ranger for like hunters. Cool. Let me go ahead and do, 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 put them in this list and so on. And I clear the, I clear the page. So yes. business cards help me. And yeah. I love my business cards. I design. Well, and that's I, I was, <laughs> great I card. was not pro business card. It was more like within the context of like this sort of where we are in like mm. ourselves. It felt like that the business card has been exchanged. At this oh, yeah. Point. If you're yeah, yeah. if you're in the room, they already have your information. Yeah. 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 If they don't if they don't call, it's not because you didn't bring a business card. Mm -mm. It's, it's because they were building the team in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Omar. Yeah. I like to bring weird little things yeah. like and and not make a not make a big thing of it, but it, it'll just be like it, it might be a little different if it's like a very serious like TTRPG meeting. But like because we all have so much stuff. But like when I worked at Loot Crate, I just had so many things. Mm -hmm. So when I was just taking like getting a coffee with somebody and just getting advice or whatever at the end, I'd be like, by the way, like, do your kids uh like 
Firefly. <laughs> like I have some stuff in my car. Like, do they want like a patch? I like just having like weird little things on hand. And even people say no, they'll remember that. Well, you'll just be like, I've got a bunch of goosebump stickers. And they're like, no, <laughs> they will stickers. not forget that. They will not forget that. <laughs> Who says no to a sticker? It's the best. <laughs> um, well, uh, we have about five minutes left. So let's just uh, let's do this last this last question because it feels sort of appropriate to the end. Uh, what do you do at the end of the meeting to keep the conversation going? <laughs> you, you don't. That's the end of the meeting. <laughs> um, it's, that's when it's done. Uh, no, but I think the the larger point there uh, to that question, at least that I would say, is you know, say you are at Big Bad Con mm. in person in meet space, and you are you know at the meet and greet, and you're you know you meet someone and you have like a nice five five to ten minutes of you know professionally cordial conversation great find them at the bar later yeah like, you know don't accost them but you know like if you want to continue that conversation find a way to it within the context of uh um you know whatever event you're at find them later tell them how much you appreciated talking with them but you know you might have a few more questions and if they are generous or decent they will probably uh, dog sighting. Um, say yes or keep keep the conversation going. You show them a dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how you get the conversation to keep going. And then you talk about your fur babies. Or you just use Omar's techniques and you keep asking him about the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> <sighs> no, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> now, where were you? Where'd you grow up? Where'd you grow up? Who you know? Uh, you grew up on Bedford? Um... Yeah, I, like if you if there's a point of personal connection, right, you can always do that where you're just like, mm -hmm. oh, cool. Like you go to this thing or, you know, like, oh, you LARP. Awesome. Maybe I'll see you at this. Or like, do you plan on going to the rent fair this year? So, and, yeah. you know, if it, come, if it came up in the conversation, if it didn't, that might seem like a very um, abrupt and dramatic non sequitur. Um, but something <laughs> that you might have talked about and gone on about of just like, oh, you know, yeah, 100 percent. Well, uh, anyway, if you want to talk about the new Zelda game when it comes out, like hit me up. Uh, yeah. You have my info. Yeah. Um, something that seems like separate. So you're not just like, I want your time. I want your time. It is like, this is an ongoing conversation. And this is some sort of dynamic uh, that we're, we're developing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think just be genuine with that. Like if you genuinely want to spend some, because there's a cost with that. That's, that's mm -hmm. some of your personal and professional time that you're going to be exploring this uh, connection, you know, with the, with this other person, like professionally, if it's, if it's someone that you got to, you know, the vibe was off in the room, but they have you on the team. You don't have to spend your personal time with them. You really no. don't. Don't ever, ever, ever feel like you have to. Not not in this industry, not in this business. Uh, if anything, with with uh, being post-pandemic, uh, we, we know how precious our emotional uh, and social time is. And it's yeah. like, respect that. Give yourself grace. Yeah, you only have so many spoons, right? You got to, mm -hmm. you got to account for them. Um, and I think that if there's anything that stood out to you in that last moment, it's like, great. Well, it was really lovely to talk about X and hit that, hit that one thing that really you felt showcased you the best and then have a great night. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of it. And you get to, you know, exit stage left pursued by the rest of your dreams and it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, we're, we're two minutes out. I guess we keep answering questions. I guess that's how this goes. Um, uh, well, this one's interesting because I feel like this is sort of like, how do you get in the room to start the conversations? And, um, I don't, you know, that's a tricky question because like, mm -hmm. I can give you a hundred different answers for how I've done it each time. It's been different. I'm sure Omar's answers will be a hundred percent different than Elise's. Mm -hmm than from Marquia's. Um, you Don't just be afraid talk. to ask. You just talk to people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, like you tell people what you want. You know, if, if people know what you want, they know how to help you. And so I think like being able to articulate question three of what do you want and why is, is that's why it's so important because you're not going to have those conversations with people if people aren't like, oh, this person is interested in doing a thing. I should talk with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's it, friends. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. 
Nine. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, and please come to Big Bad Con in person so we can meet safely and uh, touch elbows or what have you and um, play some games because uh, Big Bad Con rules. And it makes all your dreams come true. It does. <laughs> it's true. Good it's job, fun. Carlos. This is Thanks, a good panel. Carlos. Yeah, thank you for putting this together. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope it was useful for everybody. Um, <laughs> and check us out in the Discord we'll... for, for future conversations. If anybody has time, there will be a post panel, a post panel Discord channel. Yes. Yeah. There is. And follow us all on social media. Oh, <laughs> right yeah. There. Just type um, our yeah. names in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure you can find us through the listing because I think we are running out of time to yeah. listen up all our handles. So, yes, uh, we are all awesome. You can follow us on Twitter probably maybe for a few more days. Who knows? <laughs> um, hours, yeah, hours. Yeah, hours, whatever. Who cares? Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>